Hey there, my name's Mark, and if you see me for the first time, I go by the pen name of Mark L. Will, both for writing for comics and for virtual cycling events. Now, after my last video, which was about my brand new Norco Carbon CRR Performance Road Bike, I did promise that the next video was going to be comics focused and it was going to be focused on Humboldt Summer Sizzler Comic Con. But that was before the news broke, just after I released that video. And that was, of course, the news of a brand new virtual cycling platform coming out to the world. And the news was broken by Saris the manufacturer of smart trainers amongst other cycling ephemera largely for virtual indoor cycling and that platform is Indie Velo. So of course today that means I'm going to dive into a review of Indie Velo with you. So without any further ado let's take a look. First and foremost we should look at the question of who are Indie Velo? Well, they're set up by George out of the UK and Bjorn out of Deutschland or Germany. And it is a new company. And what I found out is that they are registered in the county of Kent in the UK. And it's a new platform that has been in closed beta that is by open invitation to the public through their website for about a month at the time of recording this video. But prior to that, it had been in a prototype testing stage with Saris, the manufacturer that we just discussed. So now that we've covered the basics, let's take a look at the platform itself. So once you sign into Indie Velo, you'll be meted and greeted with this login screen where you enter your details either by creating an account or once you've created said account logging in with those details. Once you then finish signing in you'll be taken straight to and pun fully intended here to the hub which is the hub of your experience with Indivilo. Now at this point I should clarify that I have actually gone through the customization of my avatar and logging in my details into the system. And now you can see me going through setting up my paired equipment, which is my Flux 2 or Tax Flux 2 smart trainer and my sensors. So in this case, it is a Wahoo Ticker X uh, heart rate monitor. And what else do I have? I believe that's everything and that's all done by and plus you can then go to your right screen and i of course select the coastal loop and i recorded this in 4k which means that you're seeing this in the full resolution i believe that indie velo are one of currently only two that offer an operable and currently working 4k resolution for in terms of these virtual cycling platforms for um, that kind of video game immersive 3D world output and I believe the other one is of course Zwift and it's not just full 4K it's full 4K rendering as well as the full 4K output it covers a couple of different resolutions including 2.5K so that covers those mid tier those mid grade gaming laptops as well so I'm on a top end gaming laptop uh, Lenovo Legion X and so this handles the 4K pretty well however the capture is not the smoothest and I'm not sure what I did incorrect with the settings there but now that you can see me riding on my bike and riding in the virtual world here let me go through how this felt now a full disclosure and being as this is a review I should cover everything very fairly and that is to say that it actually took a couple of times to get my Tax Flux 2 set up properly with this system. I will give you the full disclosure that I do not believe it was anything to do with Indie Velo. The Indie Velo system pairs really well with any manufacturer's direct drive smart trainer, which is what a Tax Flux 2 is. But I believe the issue was with my Tax Flux 2 itself, and I believe what was happening 
is that it's kind of got to a point where I have to pull the power cable out and put it back in every kind of 24 hours to give it a full reboot. Once I had done that and once I've calibrated it, and I did not realize with the Tax Flux 2 that you actually have to do it through a proprietary app, literally called the Tax Trainer app. And you can even do that on Windows desktop, on Mac, or on your smartphone, either Android or iOS. And I got that done. And I also realized a couple of other things that kind of fine-tuned it for this game. And why I emphasize this game is because uh, this works on calibration mostly in Divilo. And I didn't realize that I needed a spacer for a 9-speed cassette. Now with the Tax Flux 2, I remember seeing the literature saying that you don't need anything else, you just put it on the free hub and away you go. What I didn't realize is there's caveats there, that 10 and 11 speed you don't need any spacers. 7, 8 and 9 you need spacers, so I got the correct spacer in there after 3 years of using it, not realizing that. And in hindsight it's pretty obvious because I realized there was the tiniest, almost imperceptible tilt in the cassette. But once I got that done, once I got it calibrated after doing that all important maintenance, it worked perfectly with Indie Velo. And the reason why I give you that huge explanation, along with showing you the in-game footage and with me riding, is to let you know that this actually felt so much more realistic after having done that maintenance and calibration to riding outside in the real world how heavy that resistance feels in the big chain ring and I believe I was in the 15 tooth gear so in quite a high tension gear so I'm on 11 to 34 cassette just to give you some frame of reference there it felt a lot more realistic to how that would feel on relative flats now this course the coastal loop is relative flats if not entirely flat and that's how it would feel out in the real world, out on tarmac, here in Saskatchewan in the summer, on those equally as flat terrains, where, yes, in that high tension gear, in the big chain ring, trying to really push free like I was here, you would feel that tension coming through the chain, through your legs, and yeah, it felt very realistic and it felt very good. It was... Honestly, some of my best experience of riding in the virtual world. And it felt very stable as well, and that's one thing that I can really attest to. Now when we look at the graphics that are going on here, there's a lot of things in the UI or the user interface, and in particular with UI I'm talking about the HUD, the HUD or the heads up display. And so on the top left there you've got your time elapsed at the very top. You've got your accumulative distance so far, directly beneath that. You've got your distance climbed, or elevation gained, directly beneath that. And beneath that again, you've got your speed there with the bicycle, with the uh, speed trail coming off the back of it. And then you've got your stress points, and then calories burnt so far. Then in the centre, the top centre, you've got your heart rate, your BPM, you've got your wattage output as a direct number, not as watts per kilo, and then you have cadence, your revolutions per minute. Then top right, you've got wind speed direction, and the reason why I point all of this heads up display out is because I want to come into some graphical stuff here that I think is really interesting and very unique. So you've got your wind speed and direction, You've got your draft percentile and you've got your elevation percentile all in that little window. Beneath that you've got your, as a completion bar, you've got the distance travelled and distance total of the loop. And then at the very bottom you've got your profile of a few different things going on. So that solid colour area is your power. That turquoise little line is your cadence and the red little line is your BPM or your heart rate. Now the reason why I wanted to circle back to the wind in particular is because you may have noticed throughout this game footage and throughout the footage of me riding so far 
is these little white, almost semi-see-through ribbons that are cutting through the air and they start as a thicker solid white band and they've got a tail that's progressing forward that is more transparent or ghosted maybe. That is actually an indicator that you can use, say if you do choose to switch off much of your user interface, much of your HUD or heads up display, you can use that as a way to know whether you're being hit by a tailwind, a sidewind, a headwind, any of these things because the thicker more solid white area is the distance the, or the direction I should say that the wind is coming from whereas that ghosted tip that is whipping forward or whipping in whatever direction is the direction it is traveling in. So what I mean to say is there's something quite unique here with the graphics in Indie Velo. It will give you these nice little pointers and tips if you do choose to switch off this wealth of information, this breadth of information that you have on screen, because in all fairness, while I find it all very helpful, it might for you be an oversaturation. So the game will help you out if you do choose to switch a lot of that off. And you can fully customize that, by the way, which is something I find is quite unique about Indie Velo. What else is quite unique? Well, I find that it has a lot of things that other virtual cycling platforms do have, to be honest with you, such as with, with in particular pace spots. But what makes this quite unique is, yes, you can choose to jump straight into the world with that pace spot, the same as you would in Zwift, and be anchored straight into their same position, and you're given some kind of time of assistance, and I haven't checked that out to see what the assistance time is before you have to take over pedaling. So you even have time to set it up on your laptop because I'm playing from a distance with a laptop that I'm watching from just in front of my handlebar. So I'd have to activate it, then run over to my bike and jump on. So it gives you that time to be able to do that. So yes, that is relatively the same, but what's unique is that it has a whole ton, and I mean dozens of different power levels that even go up in small increments. Whereas in Zwift, there are only three levels. You've got your easy, your mid, your hard. So I find that to be quite unique that all levels have been covered. Also, there is some tailoring towards races and tactics therein. Well, yes, at the moment it doesn't include steering. It does include pedal tactics. And so much the same as Wahoo RGT, auto braking and auto steer is involved and much like everything else it's based on an algorithmic calculation and mathematics of real world physics how much would you need to break for this sharp corner and as a result in races you have to treat those sharp corners on relative flat or even descent the same way that you would in the outside world in other words you should probably freewheel in and pedal out and if you don't do that you will actually be given a braking penalty that will edge off a bit of time and you'll see that reflected as an actual indicator in game so you can see for example the nearest players window on that kind of center right right off to the far right of the screen but in the center you'll see your kilometers per hour your speed gauge if you will right there that will flash red and that will do, yeah blink red red and white and that will be your indicator that you've been given a braking penalty. I haven't done the races myself, I've just done free rides right here now. But there's certain tactics like that that come into play that are really aimed at keeping pedaling and your input into the bike the same as it would be in the outside world. I feel that's quite unique and that really does begin to separate Indie Velo from the competition. So overall my thoughts are that I really enjoy this. Currently, it's free for you to try at the time of recording anyway, because at the time of recording this, it's still in closed beta. And that's a closed beta that is by open invite to the public. So you can go to the website, apply, and then you get given the download link once you get approved. I do enjoy it, I think you'll enjoy it too. And it depends what you want to get out of virtual cycling and cycling indoors. You might wish to use this for training for real world races but you also might want to do casual riding i think it covers both of these things really well 
and I think it's only going to get better as we go on. You might totally disagree, you might prefer something more like augmented reality, something that's covered in Ruby, and that's perfectly fine. But for my style of writing, I really, really did get something out of Indie Velo. So go and try it and see if you enjoy it. And before we wrap up today, I want to say thank you for joining me. And I also wish to say, while I did promise that yes on the last video, that in the next video, this video, would be about Humboldt Selma Sizzla Comic Con, it actually will be the next video for sure. So we're going to cover that. That's a small comic convention that's gone through leaps and bounds out in the small rural city of Humboldt here in Saskatchewan in Canada. And we're going to chat to the creator and founder of the show, Jeff Byrne. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.